Now that the enemy waypoints are working, I'd like to load in a game map. For this, I'm going to use a free tile map. I found this tile map online from Kenny, and I'm going to put up a link to the original creator's page. I'm going to be using the grass and dirt tiles, but you could use any of these if you'd like to change the look of the game. The way the tile map works is that the image is split into these individual squares or tiles. You can then arrange these tiles in any pattern you like to create large maps with only a few images. I've previously used my own level editors in my own games, but for this project, I'm going to use a free editor called Tiled. This is the editor here. I'm not going to go into all the detail of how to use it, as it would take too long. But if you do want to see a detailed tutorial on Tiled, then let me know in the comments and I can make a separate video on that. This is the level that I've created for this game using the tiles from the asset pack. Before we go ahead and load this into the game, I want to draw your attention to a couple of properties that are important later on. So we've got width and height here of 15. What that's referring to is the number of squares, the number of tiles in each axis. So I've got 15 going left to right and 15 going up and down. Additionally, we have the tile width in pixels and the tile height. Both of these are set to 48. We don't have to worry about these just now, but we will come back to them later on. To get this tile map into our game, I can just export it as an image. There's an option down here to export as image, and that will allow me to save this as a PNG file straight into my game folder. Back here in the code, we can go into that levels folder and we can see the PNG file right there. And there's the map. So let's load that image in and use it for our level. In this section under load images, I'm going to load my map underscore image. In fact, I'm just going to separate these with other comments. So this will be the map and this one will be enemies. So map underscore image is equal to pg.image.load and the folder is levels forward slash level dot png. And lastly, we'll just say convert alpha. Next, we want to set up our game world. And I'm going to do this as a class. So I've created a file here, world.py. So you'll need to make sure you create the same file and put it in the same folder with the rest of your Python files. And we'll begin this one the same way as the others. Import pygame as pg, and then we'll create class world. And here, we don't need any inheritance from the sprite class because we don't need that functionality. So we'll create the constructor, which is our init method, pass the argument of self and map underscore image. Then we just assign that image to self dot image. And for now, that's the constructor done. So we will just create a draw method. We'll say self and surface. And here, all we'll do is call surface dot blit. What is in the blitting? Well, it's self.image and the coordinates are going to be 0, 0. So this doesn't change. The map will always be drawn from the top left corner of our game window. With that done, we can go back into the main file and create an instance of this world. But first of all, we need to make sure that we import this class. So just like we did with the enemy, we'll say from world import world with a capital W. Now I can go down here just above where I'm creating my groups and I will add a section to say create world. So world is an instance of the world class and what we pass into here, the only thing right now is the map image. Now that this instance is created, we should be able to call the draw method and show it up on the screen. So just after we fill the background down here, we're going to say draw level and we'll call world.draw onto the screen. If I run this now just to test it, we can see the map coming up. So we've still got the waypoint and the enemy moving around, but in the background, you can see part of the map. Now the whole thing doesn't fit here. And the reason for that is if we go back into our constants, we arbitrarily define these as 500 by 500 pixels. So clearly we need to resize these. We need to work out how big our map actually is. Well, this is where we go back to tiled and those attributes that I mentioned earlier. So we have 15 rows and columns, and each of the tiles is 48 pixels by 48 pixels. So I can create these variables within this section here. I'll move this down and I'll say that I have 15 rows and I have 15 columns. And each of my tiles, tile underscore size, is 48 pixels wide. And now, rather than manually defining the screen width and height, I can say that it's tile size multiplied by the number of columns and the height is tile size multiplied by the number of rows. And if we go back and test this, we should be able to see that the window is now the correct size and the entire map fits in. 
Now from this map, you should be able to see the path that I intended for the enemies. So we start up here and they follow all this path all along and exit out here. Now that means that my waypoints list is going to have to have a lot more information in it. I could do this manually. I could simply update all of these points one by one, but there's an easy way of doing this using tiled. And there's a feature here called polygons and it allows you to create a set of individual points that are all connected to each other. Now I've already done this and I've set up my waypoints here. And if I change the draw order, you'll be able to see my path that I've created. And this path is quite easy to modify. So for example, I can use this tool here to edit the polygon. And if I just click on the polygon, I can move the points around. So you can quite easily change the waypoints around as you wish. The tile map and the waypoints are on two separate layers within tiled. So I can interact with them independently. I can turn off the visibility on one or the other. But more importantly, when I export this data, I'll be able to access them separately. There are a few ways of getting this data out of tiled and into Pygame, and it all comes down to how we export it. So if I choose export as, then there's a whole bunch of different formats that I can use here. The one I've decided to go with is JSON, and I've previously exported it here as a TMJ file. So let's have a look at the contents of that and see what actually comes out from this export. So back here within my code, if I go into the levels folder and open up level.tmj, this is the JSON data from that level map. At first, this is going to look really confusing, but if we scroll down, there's a section that's going to look recognizable, and it's this bit here. We have a set of X and Y coordinates, and this is referring back to that polygon that I drew earlier. These are my waypoints. And in fact, if I scroll up a little bit, we'll be able to see the name of them. So the name here is waypoints, and that's exactly how I've named it here. So what we need to do now is parse this data here, work through the JSON file, and just extract these X and Y coordinates. And before we do any of that, we need to import the JSON module. So we go right up to the top and we import JSON. And now we need to load that file into our game. We go down here, just underneath where we've loaded the images, and I'll add a comment here to say, load JSON data for level. We'll use a context manager here. We'll say with open, and then we'll pass in the location of that file. It's in the same folder. It's in levels forward slash level dot tmj. And at the end, we add as file, and we'll save this to a variable called world data. So world data is equal to JSON dot load file. So let's just print this out and see what the output looks like. We'll print world underscore data. Now when I run this. We can see down here, we've ended up with all of that information from the JSON file output into our Pygame. So now we should be able to parse through this information and look for the data that we need for these waypoints. We'll get rid of this print statement again, and then we will take this world data and we'll pass it into our world class. So whenever we create the world instance, we will pass this data into it. We'll change that as the first argument. And then of course, on the world, we need to make sure that we receive this argument in here. So we'll add the data argument. Then self.level underscore data is assigned to that variable. Next, we need to start processing this, working our way through it and getting to the waypoint data that we need. So I'm going to create a new method here and I will call it process underscore data. It doesn't need any arguments because it will just take whatever the instance already has. And we'll add a comment to say, look through data to extract relevant info. So let's go back over to this JSON file and let's take a look at the structure. If we go back over to tiled for a second, our waypoints and a tile map are both under layers. So each of these is a separate layer. And if you have a look at our JSON file, there is a section here called layers, which contains a list. So we need to get into this layers list. To access this list, we go into self.level underscore data and we pass it into the index. So we just pass layers in here. And that's going to get us access into this layers list. And now we need to iterate through each of the layers. So for that, we use a for loop. We'll say for layer in this layers list. We now need to see which layer it is we're looking for. So each of the layers, if we go a little bit further in, it has some properties. The name is what we're looking for at the moment. So the tile map has the name tile map, but our waypoints have the name waypoints. So that's the one that we want to look for. So we go a little bit further here. Once we iterate through the layers, we want to check if that layer's name attribute is equal to waypoints. 
And at this point, let's test this out. So we'll say print layer. So if this happens, then we're going to print this out. Now, before we can run this, we need to call this process data method from our main.py file. Just after we create the world instance, we'll say world.process data. And if I run this again, I get a little output of information down here. But now you can see we're not getting as much as before. And the important thing here is that it's picking up the waypoints layer. So let's drill down a little bit further. We can pretty much ignore everything else. We know that we're now in this layer and this layer has an object list. Remember, we're just trying to get down to this polyline section here. We want to get these X and Y coordinates. So we're slowly working our way down one by one. So now we want to look through the objects list and we want to look for this polyline. As before, we just iterate through it. I'm going to get rid of this print statement and I'll say for obj in layer and we're looking for objects. Iterate through each of those objects and then extract that polyline data. So we'll save that into a variable called waypoint underscore data. And that's going to be obj index polyline. We'll go back here one last time. So this is our objects that we're iterating through this list here. And this is the polyline data. Now the polyline itself is a list, but right now we don't need to go any further because we're just going to take the contents of that list and that's going to give us all of the X and Y coordinates. And let's just print this out to see what we end up with. So we'll print out waypoints data, go back here and run this again. And if I just expand this a little bit, now you see we're not getting anywhere near as much. We've just restricted it to that polygon data. Now we've got the X and Y coordinates for each bit. But we can't use this just as it is yet, because each of these entries is a dictionary. So we have a list that has a whole bunch of dictionaries inside it, and those dictionaries have X and Y keys with their own values. So we need a further level of processing now. So we'll just get rid of this and go back into our world class. And now, just to keep things tidy, I'm going to create a separate method. And this one is going to be called process waypoints. So this will take self and it will take data. This will be the data that we pass into this. And what data do we pass? Well, it's this waypoint data that we've extracted. So now rather than printing it out, we're going to get rid of that and we'll call that function. We'll say self dot process waypoints and we pass the waypoint data into it. So the processing that we have to do now is again just to iterate through this list so that we can extract each of the values independently. I will start this with a comment to say iterate through waypoints to extract individual sets of X and Y coordinates. And we will use a for loop for that. I will say for point in data. And for now, let's just print each point out just to see what we're working with. Run this again. And now you can see they're structured much better. So now we're working through each of those one by one. The next step is to extract the X and the Y value from each of these points. We go back into here again, and we'll just save them to temporary variables. We'll say temp underscore X is equal to point dot get. And what is it we want? It's the X value. So this is going to go into our point, which is this individual dictionary one by one, and it will get the value of the X key. So to get the Y value, we need to pass the Y key and we'll do the same thing here. We'll copy this down, change from X to Y, and that will give us both of the points. So we can change this now to print out a different statement. So we'll take our temp underscore X and our temp underscore Y. We'll run this. And now you see it looks very similar to before, but now instead of being a dictionary, we just have these tuples for each waypoint. We have an X and a Y coordinate for each one. Now we just need to gather them all up together and store them inside one list. In this constructor, I'm going to add another variable called self.waypoints and I will set it to an empty list. And now at the end here, after each iteration of the for loop, I will update that waypoints list. So I will use append and I will add a tuple of temp x and temp y. I can now compare this to the original waypoints list that we manually created. So let's just print out waypoints and we'll see what that looks like. So we have this list with tuple values inside it. And now we can use the one from the world class. So we'll say world.waypoints. Run it again. 
and it looks the same, but now I just have a lot more values and they're all taken from that tiled file. Now we can remove this waypoints list that was created manually. So we'll delete that and into the enemy class, we pass in the one that's attached to our world instance. And also down here in the game loop where we're drawing that path, we need to make sure we do the same thing. So if we run this again, you can now see the path follows what I've drawn previously in tiled and the enemy walks along that path as well. From this point on, we don't really need to draw those waypoints anymore. So I'm going to delete this section and now it looks a lot nicer and it just looks like the enemy is following this dirt path.